Velkomin all saman til netarasar heimol fröðings Norberts Gers Bikja. Ek heit Jackson Crawford. O netros mini tala ek um norrnt mol, og in sigil du norrnu goða kæði, með óðni, þór, loka og óðrum ósum. I dag mun ek mæla norrnu Målet i norra London i vikingaöld och vär munum finna hur så mycket nuvarande män från Islandi, Danaveldi och Norregi får detta äldre målet skilligt. All mål bräktask jappenväl isländska en raust omu enderomar i raustum barna barna och. Nu Hörum hverjur þessir aðrir gestir eru og hvaðan þér koma frá. Hæ, ég heiður Mikael og ég blir ofta kæld for Mik. Ég undervísar í dansk online og ég har også en kanal på YouTube som heiður Mik's Languages, hvor ég har forskellige videoer med det danske språk, udtale, grammatik og andre ting. Kom ég sæl, óskabræ heiti ég og kenni íslensku á netinu. Ég er með YouTube Raus og er þekktu sem speak viking á netinu og ég er mjög spættur að vera hér í dag. Þörst það er på Troms dialekt. Hei, ég heiti Tóleif og ég er en norsk lærir online og ég også har en YouTube-kanal som er Norwegian Square som ég da underviser i. Og det er da dette jeg gjør til daglig og ganske morsomt. Dette er min dialekt som jeg kan bruke. Men jeg kan snakke på bokmål, som er litt enklere å forstå for folk. Så dette kan jeg også snakke. Depends on who you're talking to, because I'm a ny norsk guy. Ja, ny norsk. It's not the same as Troms dialect. Oh, I know. But I like dialects. So it's not so crazy. So, for more than a decade at various universities in the US, I've been teaching Old Norse, the medieval language of Scandinavia, in addition to modern Scandinavian languages. And the old language of Scandinavia, of course, has changed over time in different ways in different parts of Scandinavia, in some respects less in Iceland than in other countries. What I'm going to do here is read some Old Norse sentences in their reconstructed pronunciation from about the 1200s AD, and we're going to see how much of that is understandable to a modern speaker of Icelandic Norwegian. Or Danish. I'll be reading five sentences in Old Norse, again with reconstructed 1200s pronunciation. And uh, first, I will simply read the sentence out loud, and each of the uh, modern Scandinavian language speakers will have a chance to to tell us what they what they hear in it. And then I will also show it to them written, so that they may get some extra cues from the written language as well. Okay, Snjor. Fell ein dag i skogen. Are we all good? This just sounded. This just sounded super easy. And uh, yeah, since I didn't understand to... anything, that's supposed to be okay with because I didn't understand much of your introduction. So, <laughs> so it's it's supposed to start super easy. All right. Now let's see that written down. Snjor fell ein dag i skogen. Okay. Everybody good? Okay. The dice say Torlaib first. Uh, first I thought it was uh, Norbert. Norbert fell the uh, skogen, but it's not him. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that is uh, Snorbert fell in the skogen. So I think that is um, one person went one day in the woods. So where do you get one person? Uh, I don't know what Snorbert is, to be honest. Um, never heard of it. Uh, I have no clue. No, rings no bells. There are, there are some dialects in Norway and, and in older Nynorsk where this word actually occurs more or less in that form. Um, sometimes in Western Norway, those dialects where they say snu for sni. The dice say mick next. So what did you hear? I heard um, sni felt in the skon, which translates into snow fell one day in the forest. We wouldn't have the same uh, grammatical structure in modern Danish. We would have a different syntax. Uh, or we could probably say snee and the snow fell one day. That would probably help it. 
Uh, and that's what I heard in the first uh, listening and also in the writing. It just confirmed what I had heard. Yep. All right. And then Oscar? Yeah, basically the same thing that Mick just said. Uh, snow fell one day in the forest is exactly what I heard. And it's, you know, written a bit more poetic than you might hear it in the spoken uh, everyday Icelandic. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. And basically the, the, the written form is almost the same. Minus that the past tense of, of fell now has a long vowel. And then you have some pronunciation differences, like the two L's becoming like. Snjór fjell dag í skoin. Yeah, so it's really a pronunciation difference more than more than a written difference, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's hear the second sentence. Margir fuglar bjögu í þessum skogi. Can we hear it again, please? Margir Fuglar Byogu i Thesum Skogi. The eye center is just like, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine, but I don't. <laughs> I am I'm lost, totally. Okay, do you want to see it written now? Please. Markir Fuglar Byogu i Thesum Skogi. You ready to tell me what you heard? Because the dice say you're first, Mick. Okay, right. So uh, <laughs> I'm. This is not as, as number one. I'm pretty lost now. I didn't understand anything in the saying in the spoken version, and the written one. Well, I would say uh, fugler is uh, fool in Danish, which is uh, birds. Bjugu must be to build bjuger, but maybe I'm totally wrong here. It's from the same root. But in modern Danish, this would be uh, Borda. What's good? Borda. Bo yeah. The... Borda. They live. The yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, Margir, I have no idea. So, the birds live in uh, Skogi, is the skull again, which is the forest, I guess. Fesum, I have no idea about that word. Okay. Tore So, uh, what I thought it was was. Margir Higlar Jorgar i Sessenskog. It was not correct. It was said Margir Fuglar Bjuggu i Bessenskog. And as Mick said, Fuglar means fool, which is bird. So Margir, I'm curious, maybe it means many birds. And Bjuggu, I'm thinking maybe that is they're yelling or chirping or something in the Bessum. I'm just thinking maybe that is nice forest. Um, I was probably wrong. So I said many birds yell in the nice forest, I think. So so keep in mind in, in Old Norse or in Icelandic, that letter that looks like the B and P together, thorn, is the th sound like an English think. So thesum. And then Oscar? Margir fuglar bjuku i thesum skoje. And... I understood it as you said it, Jackson. Uh, many birds lived in this forest. Yeah. So again, actually, I'm pretty sure the written form is identical in modern Icelandic. So what we have here that's different in Norwegian and Danish is the root word for many in Old Norse is mark, which remains in Icelandic, but then on the consonant is replaced by the root from, uh, from Low German mang, Right, so this is modern mange fugler. And then the uh, verb for to dwell in, to live, uh, bua, in the languages on the consonant, has a reformed past tense. So byogu is the past plural third person in Old Norse and modern Icelandic. But then in, uh, you know, forgive my terrible accent in Danish, but in Danish it's boa. And then in uh, modern Norwegian, buda, buda, depending on, on uh, dialect. And then also the word for this uh, has many different inflectional forms in Old Norse or Icelandic. So thesum is the dative uh, masculine singular in this instance. Whereas in uh, modern Norwegian and Danish in the singular, this just has one form, which is from the old masculine accusative singular, dena. So there's all familiar roots more or less, but with some very different forms from those roots in modern Norwegian and Danish. And and thesum, I guess thesum is probably related to this in English, I guess. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and and of course the plural disa. Mm, disa in Danish, yes, of course. Yeah. 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 But 
But that root mm. ses can appear in the singular in Old Norse, unlike in modern Norwegian and Danish. Mm -hmm. All right, now for number three, which is a longer sentence. I thvi hasta tre i skogen, bygdu tver nesingar reder sit. You repeat, please. I thvi hasta tre i skogen, bygdu tver nesingar reder sit. Do you want to see it written? Please. All right. I thvi hasta tre i skogen, bygdu tver mesingar reder sit. Let me roll my dice. Well, the dice say that you're first, Meg. Okay, so again, the first time I was lost, but I heard the word skogen, skogen, I cannot pronounce it correctly, which is skogen. We had it the same uh, form, the same grammatical form in the first example, I think. Skogenum. Bygde, they build, right? So in the something in the in forest, somebody build. Hredersit. Uh, right, I'm aware that uh, in Danish, the, the positive pronoun would be in the beginning. Sin, red, red, which is the nest of the bird. So it's, uh, and okay, right, sorry. I was talking about what I heard. When I heard, I only heard the skogunum and the hesta tre. I had no idea. Hest is horse, right? but it makes no sense. So horse doesn't kind of make any sense. But then I saw it written and then I figured out, okay, reder. First, I had actually heard uh, treder. And uh, then I thought about Swedish. I think they called Tred God, which is uh, the garden in Swedish. So I thought about they built their garden. But now I say Hreda, which must be, must be the nest, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Tver must be two or three. And uh, the two. And this Messinga is a bird. I have, uh, I think there is some bird in Danish that has this a similar name, but I've forgotten the, the word of it. And Hesta, I have no idea. Three, three, three. Three is uh, must be two again, right? It makes sense to have two trees in the forest where this uh, bird built their uh, nest. No, no, two no, is the TV sense. root. Thorn V is different, but you're absolutely okay. right about nest. Um, so mm -hmm. that actually shows a very regular change from Old Norse into Danish, where HR just becomes R, so like ring becomes ring, uh, and then EI becomes just E, right? Like stain the stem. Yeah, so that's a very regular so yeah, exactly. Okay, Oscar. I thvi hasta tre i skoginum beidu tveir messingar reyður sitt. Yeah. So, so. A, a couple things I was wondering about, wanted to confer with you about with modern Icelandic. I think in modern Icelandic I probably would have said hasta trenu or would you say it this way? Would you say i thvi hæsta trenu? No, not thvi, i hæsta trenu. Yeah. Yo. So, Yo. so what, the reason I didn't do it that way in Old Norse is that the article I find is less often used and they often revert to the that forms when it's followed by some qualifying statement or like a relative clause. So it does just seem more natural to me a little bit in Old Norse. Another thing that I thought would be kind of different is you'd probably have the article before sit, so you'd like hreidrið sit. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think those are very good uh, observations. Uh, if you were to say this sentence in modern day Icelandic, you would say something like í hæsta trénu í skoginum byggðu tveir uh, messingar Sit. And then for the bird word, I, I think in modern Icelandic this is tipur. Not or do you or does anyone say mesingar anymore? Um I, I'm not good enough with the birds to know that, okay. but I I think something like this to me sounds a little bit familiar, like something that I might have come across once or twice, but um but what did you just say now, Jackson? I think in mo so the modern Icelandic word I know for this bird is is tita, not mesingar. But I'm not sure there's I'm not sure they exist in Iceland. I think it's a continental bird, so I don't know. 
I, I mean, that, that kind of makes sense to me because uh, when I hear that name, both those names, those are not birds that kind of pop up in my, you know, wheelhouse of birds in Icelandic. But then again, I'm not a big uh, bird enthusiast, but... Um, I, I, I have the bird now. Now I have it. Now I've, I, it came to me, the, the word in Danish for this bird. Yeah. Same root. It, it should be the same root in Danish. Yeah, it's very similar. It's kind of kind of similar, but it's a bit longer. Mice. Yeah, yeah, that's the same word. Okay, Torla. I thought it was. I tre hefter tre i skogen dikte tre messer går tre bersiv uh, sit. But when I saw there, it's a bit different. I think Mick had a very good observation on the bigur, which obviously is to build. But am I, I thought it was, I have to cut the tree in the forest, but losing the hair because messing it is close to miss, missing. Hmm, Mi mister. Mister. I thought it was mister. Maybe he lost his hair, which was kind of weird. <laughs> okay. I see. Uh, I see. We, we still haven't uh, uh, figured out what the word hesta means. I still don't know it. Yeah. What That's is not that? That's a word in Danish. It's highest. 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 Who is? Mm. Yeah. Highest. Highest. Ah. So in Old Norse and, and, and then still modern Icelandic, the word for high is, is hor, modern Icelandic haur. And so this is the superlative, the highest. But then this is another case where the continental languages have borrowed a low German word, hug or hui. Uh, so that's a, another case of vocabulary replacement. But then, yeah, the, but, but uh, still similar, right? It's still it's still related, totally. Like, you yeah, know, it's, it's still it's from the it's, I don't know if ultimate, the ultimately word, from the same root. Hmm. And then and then the bird word, yeah, that should be in in what what would that Danish mice word? In my in my to mice. Yeah. M e j s e. Yeah, and then I think it's the same roughly in Norwegian, maybe without the uh, at the end. Yeah, it might be. I'm not a good with birds either. Okay. So. Like Oscar, I don't know. Well, we are also having ornithological speculations. <laughs> okay. In the highest tree in the forest, two titmice built their nest. I had to think about the English word for the bird. <laughs> 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 so, so, so I'm like, uh, uh, first I'm like, uh, chickadee, wait, no, that's the North American bird. Titmice. And then I thought, does that sound wrong? <laughs> tit mice. So, so it, so it is called tit mouse. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's a European. I don't know, man. It's a European word. That's bird. Interesting uh, bird. Yeah. All right. Here's the fourth sentence. In oren stormen kom, stal kroka thera egg. Again, please. In old ren stormren kom, stal kroka thera egg. The first part I am lost, but I have uh, the last part. I had to have a, a little, a bit, a bit of a sense out of it at least. But the first part okay. is kind of. Could you say it again, please? In old ren stormren kom, stal kroka thera egg. I would have to see it written. Okay, yeah. let us see it written. In old ren stormren kom, stal kroka thera egg. Thera egg. I think I think egg comes from the Vikings, isn't? Is it from Norway? I think so. In in yeah, it's an old Norse word that is borrowed into English. Are we ready to? To go. Uh, this is a small sack. I need to translate. We we are still in the in the in the in the in the bird. I would say we're still in the bird uh, universe, but still it's uh, a I, bit. Uh, it's a lot of birds. Yeah. I have a clue about the kroka. I think I know what that is. Feeling ready? Same in Norwegian. All right. Oscar. En auður en stormurinn kom stal kroka þerra ek. That's the same language. Come on, it's the same language. <laughs> so, can I yeah. just, ja Jackson, can I paraphrase into how I would say it in, in modern sure, day? Sure, of course, yeah. Thanks. So, and auður and stormurinn kom 
stal kráka ekki þeirra. Yeah, I, I would also have reversed that. Uh, but I did it both ways in these sentences. So in sentence three, I had the noun before the possessive, and then in this one, I, I flipped them. Because in Old Norse, there isn't the same consistency, right? Modern Icelandic and then modern Norwegian dialects have really favored noun plus possessor. Modern Danish and Swedish really favor possessor plus noun, but then in Old Norse, it just seems to be kind of random. So I just decided to kind of mix. But yeah, I mean, once again, the written form with a couple changes, a U that will be added between the M and the R there, yeah, exactly, is very similar. Pronunciation, very similar, minus some vowels especially, and then a couple places were double, uh, double consonants. Uh, Mick? It's cheating. Well, this is, I don't um, know, this is, part of, this is part of what we're looking at. It's not a game. <laughs> Nobody wins yeah. anything except nobody wins anything except hearing my terrible accent in Icelandic Danish. <laughs> it's a good accent. It's a good oh. accent, Jackson. Thank you, thank you. That... But, but it sounds very similar to to Icelandic. I would say, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to keep them apart. These two languages. I, uh, it's it's sometimes uh, well, hard okay. for me uh, because I do have to keep them apart for some purposes. Uh, Mick. So right. So okay. So now now we just saw how. Uh, similar these two languages are, Icelandic and uh, Old Norse. I am lost here. I, uh, s the last part is their eggs, there's egg, I would say. Uh, I would say the word after the comma, stal, is uh, stjæl, it, it's stole. That's how I see it. Somebody stole, some, some bird stole their egg, their eggs. Uh, Kroka could be uh, krau, a crow, the bird crow. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. And as I said from the beginning, the first part, um, right, it would have to be something like a, a, a rainy, stormy day or something, maybe, but I'm, I have no idea. I cannot make anything out of these words. You're correct in seeing storm in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Trilla? So I said, in Orden, Torden, Kont, Stol, Krokka, there is egg, Orden, Stormen. Um, yeah, but I see now, I think that one year a storm came and a crow stole their eggs, I don't know, the data, uh, yeah, the, the croca, yeah, that's the crow. Oh, yeah. I think that's year. Uh, so, yeah. You, you two are closer than you, than you think you are. Yeah. So, uh, the last half was pretty understandable, right? A crow stole their egg or their eggs. Um, so Theira, of course, in, in some Norwegian dialects and in New Norse, Daira uh, is from that, right? Uh, Deris in Bukmol. So uh, but one thing that's happened is we have two words, two, two meanings in, in a word that's spelled the same way in Old Norse and Icelandic, which is N. So the first N would be in uh, Danish or Swedish, men, right? But, right? And then the second N is than. Right, which in Norwegian is E N N, right, and then in Danish I think yeah. it's E and D, yeah. right for than. So before for than, the comparative for the for the yeah, comparative yeah. form, like more so than. Uh. Yeah, so it's but earlier than. So before before the storm came, Ooh. a crow stole their mm. egg or their eggs. Yeah. Could you oh. could you could you could you pronounce it once again, please, Jackson? Yeah, in Oldren stormen kom stal kroka der egg. And one thing that I'm doing, by the way, that's different from modern Icelandic is I'm not pronouncing a vowel between the, the M and R and the E and R, especially if there's a vowel behind it. I'm kind of letting those syllables, I'm, I'm, I'm not making it a distinct syllable, which in earlier Old Norse, we would expect it not to be. Sometimes hard to do, but it's easier for me to do if there's a vowel after it. So the translation is, but before the storm came, the, came, the crows uh, stole their eggs. Yeah, a and crow. How is that second word? That second word is interesting. How is that before? So that's it's it's of course lost in the modern Scandinavian languages on the continent, as far as I in, know. In we have the word in and in. Yeah, but, but I don't know older, if that's related. In, but older, it's related to English ear. If you've ever seen that in poetry, e r e, um, it's mm. it's distantly related to the English word early. Um, but yeah, it's lost. Of course, you you know fur fur and would be mm. the, the continental form now. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Au, those are kind of like, they're kind of locked in. Auður and, like together they make sense as, you know, but before. And just before, auður and before. And it's one of those things that it's it's very hard to try to make sense of it if you're trying to explain it through English. Um, but I think what you said, Jackson, just now made uh, sense. Yeah, I'm just translating it as, as but before. Okay, so sentence five. Vinner med vengi hever than uven er flyger. Again, please. Vinner med vengi hever than uven er flyger. Written form, please. I'm All right. Let us see it written. Oscar, Oscar is just sitting there. <laughs> what the yeah, problem? Just, uh, What's okay. the problem? <laughs> okay. Oh, Vin- <laughs> Winner med vengi hever than ofin er flyger. So as you might be able to tell, I was looking at birds when Norbert told me I needed to write five sentences. And uh, I thought I would try to end it on kind of a proverbial observation. Does it does it contain a bird? I don't see any bird here. If you were talking, if you're trying to say that, <laughs> I mean, it's still related to the bird story, but there's not a bird, okay. there's not a word for bird. Okay, okay, good, okay, flugod. Yeah, okay, that's the only word I actually understand. <laughs> I mean, Norbert, if you'll let me point one thing out. Yep. A uh, little tip on uh, on on word forms. Of course, you notice in some of these previous sentences, there's a lot of words in. Uh, Old Norse that ended in R that isn't there in Norwegian or, or Danish. So stormer, storm, snjor, sne, sne. That's another one. Uh, Hreder versus Danish leather. So the, uh, you know, same thing with like Vinner. Could you get some, could you could you give some more hints, please? Norbert, what do you think? No, <laughs> no more hints. No, okay, no okay. more hints. <laughs> It, even even that hand is a little bit oblique because the vowel wouldn't necessarily help you in modern Norwegian or Danish. Mm. Again, it's, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Oh man, this is crazy, and it's just so far away from 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 anything I know. <laughs> uh, and I, I I I also speak Swedish pretty well. I understand Norwegian and stuff, and I it's, I'm just lost, you know. Except yeah. for you, good. All all of the pieces are there in Danish. Yeah. Mill, it's the second word, I guess. Uh, but okay. So uh, Oscar, you you just put in yours. Vinur me vangi hevur þann ofin er flýgur. Of course, uh, differences in spelling. We have the the U R instead of just the R uh, after consonants. Uh, one thing I'll point out. That is, I think, a contrast to modern Icelandic again, is another syntactic thing where uh, if you have a relative clause, right, er, flyger, and Old Norse are, in modern Icelandic, sem flyger, sem flyger, uh, that's usually preceded by the noun with a form of that on it. So in modern Icelandic, I think I would just say, uh, oven sem flyger, sem flyger. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. a syntactic difference. But other than that and the spellings, anything you want to comment on? So the first time that I heard you say the sentence, Jackson, I didn't completely follow. I think I got a little bit lost because Vinder. Uh, but then once you said it the second time, then it made perfect sense. Vinder med vanki hever than oven er flygur. And I think also this might be, you know, the trickiest out of all of these because it's very sort of, like you said, uh, proverbial or poetic in its structure. Um, a friend with wings has the enemy that flies. It's the direct translation that, that I come up with. Yeah. Um, so, and by the way, that's interesting that you said that when I was saying it, you didn't catch... Vinur, because I would say Vinur in modern Icelandic. Here, I was actually sort of trying in uh, these sentences to pronounce 
Fs as regular labial dental fricatives, the. But I was trying to give a little bit more of a bilabial V where it's spelled V because at some point there was a difference in the old Norse period. So my maybe it was my more bilabial V sound. Like, v, vinur. I think what trips me up is the fact that vinur, V I and you are and then vinur v i double n u r oh sure the verb yeah yeah the verb and the and the noun those things they're very they're close so you know if you if you don't like nail uh, the pronunciation 100% and i think your pronunciation is very good um but then i just got tripped up a little bit but then once you said it the second time it it made sense so uh, a friend with wings has the enemy or has an enemy in that whom uh, flies, that which flies. And by the way, this interesting observation about uh, uh, the verb, right, works, right? Uh, although in, in Old Norse, I would have said those two ends longer, more like vinnar, right? I would have held the two ends because apparently there was some difference uh, since they're so consistent about spelling it with two ends. Okay, Twilight. Right. Um... I had absolute, I was completely lost there. I was wrong in every sense. Uh, I said inner medven medven the heder son organ at flyger. So I thought the vinur med was linked and switch because oh. vinur med means medven medven means the wind with you. So if you walk, you could say jag har medven which means I have a wind with me. Uh, so I switched that. And then Medvin, then Venge, I thought it was Vare, the weather. Uh, Hefur, I don't know. I thought it was Befinnesai. Befinnesai means to exist or to be. So I thought the wind with you uh, <laughs> in the weather exists. And then the oven, I guess, and fly. <laughs> what's so? So part of what's part of what's interesting is that uh, all these elements, like I said, are there in Danish or Norwegian. Um, so you have some some vowels that have gone like one rung down, and some that have gone one rung up. So vinner is van, right, mm. my friend, and then. Oven is uven, right? So enemy. Uh, but it's interesting. Oven. Oh, oven. Oh. Yeah. So it's 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 interesting how like one vowel has gone one step down, one vowel has gone one step up, and that makes yeah. it just that much harder to understand. If you said uven, I would I would know uven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you said ven, when e, I would think if you switch those two, I would probably have a better yeah. guess. Yeah, so just just those, just like I said, just one vowel going one, a little bit down, one vowel going a little bit up, and all of a sudden it's harder to understand, even though all the pieces are there in modern Norwegian or Danish. It's, it's tripping in me off. <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah, it's a bit fun. All right, Mick. Okay, so uh, the first uh, the uh, oral part, I was lost. I uh, understood the word flyger, flyger, flies. Um, the word mel, the second word. But I was lost. The, all the rest was there was nothing. And uh, uh, then you were discussing with uh, uh, Oscar, and I thought that maybe uh, vi yeah. No, first I actually thought about the the wind as well as as Tolab did wind in the beginning, right? But it kind of makes no sense. I couldn't find the verb, the verb. And if you don't find a verb, you're pretty lost. Now I can see the verb is is clear. Have right? Uh, have even related to English. Uven is also, I figured it out when you talk, talk to, to Oscar about it. Uven, we have that in Danish today. We use it very rarely. You can be uven with somebody. You I like not talking to that person because you disagreed on something, right? Uvena. That's only the only use we have today. Um, yeah, right. Uh, I'm lost. I'm lost. And I, it's crazy for me to see how Icelandic is almost the same. And yeah. Danish and Norwegian is, are so far away. Um, uh, but but as 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 Jack needs to say, we have the words vena, mel, vinger, ha, um, den, uven, some fluor. Is the, the then is then is that the 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 article? 
Uh, well, it's not it's not exactly the article. It's it's the word that, uh, but that's always used before dinner, dinner relative clause. It's like dinner again, right? Yeah. Okay. So mm. although dinner is from a, the extended version that really means this, so it's if if I were to use the exact equivalence, I would say den uven. You wouldn't say it that way in Danish, but that's what. But den is actually from than. Mm. So, uh, I just want to say if you want to use den. An adjective in the middle of then, for example, then go then a good friend. We don't use then without an adjective, so I guess. That's but we do in Norse... Danish. We do in Danish, in 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 relative sentences. Sorry, in relative sentences we do it. Then uven some fluor. We can do that in Danish oh, without the adjective. Okay. And that's and that's exactly what Old Norse is doing. Is it's using it in that relative sense, right? So that's lost in Norwegian. Uh, it's. Not really that common in modern Icelandic, but that's but it's a, a prominent part of Old Norse syntax. So that's interesting. You know, there's it's there's three different streams that this language has followed in going into these three different modern languages. Yeah, very interesting. Norbert, what do you what do you say to this? Yeah, I think it was great. So what what do you guys think? Do you have any overall thoughts about this whole experience? Jackson, what's your impression? Like, how did the guys do? Yeah, I think this went as expected. I mean, there's, it's like with any two languages that are related. When you first look at it or first hear it, it may seem more unfamiliar than when you have a second or a third look at it. Uh, and realize some of the correspondences between, uh, say, unlike vowels at different stages of the language. Of course, with Icelandic, there's more structural similarity and also uh, outside of some vowel differences and some things with double consonants, a lot of uh, pronunciation similarity. Uh, but there's still little things where, you know, Norwegian and Danish today have uh, clear echoes of Old Norse, not just in the basic vocabulary, but in um, some little details of grammar. So for example, as Mick was pointing out, uh, relative clauses in Danish work a little bit more like Old Norse than they do in Icelandic or Norwegian, right? Which you wouldn't necessarily expect given that Icelandic is more structurally similar overall. But so each language kind of has a random assortment of, of inheritances, right? Just like any three kids of a parent, even though one kid looks a lot like the parent in a photograph. Yeah, the, the Icelandic kid looks exactly, almost exact, to my point of view, exactly the same. <laughs> well, there's always a kid like that, right? You know, like yeah. uh, we, we've all met kids that look a lot like their parents and kids that don't look quite as much like them. So, you know, my siblings, I'm black haired, my sister's blonde and my brother's red haired, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> we're, but, but we're all clearly siblings. Yeah. Nice. Guys, do you, do you want to add something? I think, you know, the only thing I would add to, you know, mix uh, uh, point, and I, I, I totally, I get the <laughs> frustration, is just that um, our, uh, you know, our history and our, um, you know, the, the wealth and the treasure that we have in the language also comes or came at a great price, which was this sort of isolation for a very, very long time. So, you know, um, obviously it's, it's not some sort of like, you know, something that we did that would, it was just the fact that we've been isolated for such a long time and Denmark and Norway and Sweden, they all live in this European continent where people are free to move. And so the languages have just changed more rapidly than Icelandic has. Why would you think that, what could be an explanation why, why uh, in this case, Danish and Norwegian and Swedish have changed so much and been simplified so much and Icelandic has not? What, what's, is it just, I don't know. I, uh, do you have an I, idea, Oscar or Jackson? I, I think it's just, uh, you know, from my perspective is it's simply the proximity you have to other countries that Iceland just doesn't have. So you try to make your own language easier to be intelligible with other uh, languages or is that? I think there's a few things that are going on there. Um, so part of it is with physical distance, there's less exposure to other language communities. But if you look at uh, English, 
before the Norman conquest, it's already changing in the centuries of Old English before it's really in contact with many other languages. Languages can change even if they don't have outside influences on them. Uh, and Icelandic has changed some, but I think part of what has kept Icelandic from changing as much as other languages is, is partially this really conscious literary tradition that always looked back at the Eddas and sagas, right? So for the last eight centuries, people have more or less read the same literature over, over time. That reinforces the standards and the language of that literature, right? So even though little pronunciation things change because you're always saying the language the same way on the page, you're always hearing it read out that way, it kind of keeps the language more conservative. There's a literary break on the continent where when the uh, high middle ages come in, even after you know, the, the conversion to Christianity where the, the continental Scandinavian countries are, are much more integrated with the continental church, uh, the, the literature of old centuries, right? The, the, the poems about the gods, the sagas, gets kind of suppressed in favor of that international literature. And there's no status for the spoken language. There's nothing for people to kind of emulate, right? You just talk like you talk because nobody writes it down. There's no status literature in it. It's just how you talk to other people on the farm. So there's not the same conscious effort to preserve it uh, that I think you've seen in Iceland. Oh, it, that's probably too rambling, but Norbert can probably cut it down to five words. No, it, it's super interesting. Uh, that, that It's really cool. So maybe uh, final words for Terelief. Terelief, was your dialect uh, any help in this challenge? <laughs> Because you uh, speak no, a local it, dialect, like could you just uh, remind us uh, what's the name of the dialect? Uh, Tromsø dialect, uh, Nordnorsk dialect. It's the northern Norway, so it's not only Tromsø; it's parts northern part of Norway. Norway is quite long, has very long coasts, shorter than Canada, but quite long. Uh, so half here of Norway. It's not that many people, but. Yeah, it didn't work at all. Uh, it's, I think when I look back on some words here, like the oven and vinur, uh, they, I couldn't use my dialect there. <laughs> it didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there were some traits there, but it didn't really help too much. Uh, but uh, I envy uh, Oscar a lot. Um, <laughs> you and Jackson became good friends here with your similarities so it's good but, well, <laughs> well we all you know this is this is great too because we all came into this as as total strangers and i had no idea how this would go but this was kind of fun i mean it was different there's no no pressure nobody wins anything uh, norbert maybe you should you should mail us you know little little paper trophies <laughs>